Okay, so I just got gas and I am heading to the truck parts place right now. So what I'm going to do here is pick up a transmission. This is a little bit of a long story. This has been, ever since I bought this truck, I've been really trying to decide if I want to just put it on the road or if I want to do a complete restoration on it. I was pretty sure I wanted to put an automatic transmission in because I want it to be friendly for the girl to drive. I don't want it to be a pain in the butt. We got lots of hills around, we got a steep driveway. It's going to be short runs this truck. It's not going to be a highway haul. Occasionally. But. So, I wasn't really sure when I was going to start working on this thing because I didn't know exactly what I was going to do with it. But it's, it's kind of moved up on the list of tasks that we need to complete. You know, I got two loads of gravel in right before Christmas for the driveway to start fixing it up. And those loads of gravel in a dump truck were $300 a piece. Gravel is only about 120 bucks. But the delivery charges were, in my mind, a little bit ridiculous for a dry boat and dump. And I got two of them. So, this is, this is one of the thoughts going through my head here is, you know, delivery charges like that, when I'm going to leave lots of sand and gravel, you know, we're going to need soil, there's a lot of things we're going to need around there. And this truck will be worth it to get on the road sooner than later because I'm throwing money away on things that I really should not be throwing money away on. I've got another old truck there I've had since brand new. It's a 1994 Ford pickup. Good truck, it's only got 200,000 kilometers on it. You know, so, kilometers, yeah, given the Canadian away here. You know, that's, uh, what, 120,000 miles. You know, not really that bad, but it's had a bit of a hard life, and it's, it's not the truck for the job at all. So, the big red GMC 6000. The first step, really is the engine and transmission. So I started looking around, I found an old brochure from 1980 for these trucks, the, the GMCs in 81, but I found the original sales brochure for 1980 and it listed an Allison AT540 transmission for this truck as an option. Not necessarily a lot of those automatics probably got put in. I'm, I'm gonna guess that a lot of those automatic transmissions probably went into trucks that were being used in cities, around towns. You know, they weren't probably highway haulers. They weren't people out in the country. It was gonna be a lot of city trucks. You know, probably lots of idling time on them and stuff. So I, I thought it was gonna be really complicated trying to find one of these transmissions. I started punching it up on the internet. There were not a lot of these around. You know, I, I found a few around home here within the province anyways. There are some pretty far out of province that I would have had to get trucked in. Different states, I found some listed. So I ended up calling this guy because I found a listing. And we started talking about this transmission. And uh, he told me, oh, I, I think I have one on the shelf out in the back. He goes, I'll give you a call back and we'll see if I got one on the shelf. There. So it was a couple hours later, he gives me a call back. And he goes, yeah, yeah, I got one sitting out there. He goes, you know, came, came out of a vehicle like yours. It, it's on the shelf. Should be all good. We offer warranties. You know, no issue. So, fine. Made the deal. Told him I was going to come by, pick it up in a few days. Went out to actually grab this thing. I was going to stick it in the back of my car because it's got a long drive. It's got to drive about a thousand kilometers to, to the homestead. So, I, I went down to grab it. And as soon as I walked in and started talking to this guy, he looked at me and said, why do you want an AT540 transmission? And I, I told him, I said, well, I did some research and I found that that was the optional transmission for this truck. He goes, yeah, you, you really don't want one of those. He goes, well, why don't you put a 545 in it? So I just kind of looked at him. I said, you know, I'm a car and truck guy. I mean, sorry, I'm a, I'm a car and bike guy. You know, these, these bigger trucks, I don't know an awful lot about them. I've done some research, done some reading on the internet, looked at lots of forum posts, people with a lot of opposing opinions about everything under the sun. 
as I started talking to this guy, I mean, he, he knows his stuff. He's working in uh, a wrecking yard that deals in heavy trucks and big equipment and very intelligent, very easy to talk to kind of guy. Wasn't pushing me in any real direction with anything. He was suggesting things that he thought would be beneficial to me. So I, I, I enter kingdom and uh, we talked about some things we ended up driving out to the yard to look at a 545 that was in an old school bus because he figured it would have all the other parts that I need it would have the shifter it would you know possibly have a rad a whole bunch of stuff here so we went out took a look at this thing and yeah sure enough it it looked like a good candidate only thing I didn't really like right off the hop was the the shifter was mounted up under the dash and it was a big huge god-awful kind of thing that the, the first thing I thought was how the heck am I gonna mount this in the truck like I gotta get another shifter and my original plan was to find a transmission for a reasonable price maybe rebuild it myself because I've done a couple automatic transmissions and then start rounding up all the other parts I need because I knew there was gonna be a long list of things you know wasn't sure if this was originally gonna come with a torque converter need a flywheel need a starter possibly a cross member probably a drive shaft at least for parts to mix and match and build the right one by you know connecting it for the OTU joints uh, the emergency brake or actually parking brake drum that mounts on the back of the transmission because these transmissions don't actually have a parking brake system inside of them you know, need a radiator with a transmission cooler the lines all this stuff so we're all looking at this bus, and uh, I asked them, I said, you know, have you guys got many of these trucks around? And they predominantly deal in heavy trucks, big trucks, you know, semis. He goes, yeah, we got a whole pile of them over in the field over here. He goes, come on, let's, let's go take a look and see what we got. And as we started driving away from the bus, he looks over and he goes, hey, I, I forgot about this one. He goes, this one's not really in our computer system. It's been sitting here for a while. So it's a truck just like mine. We went went took a peek at it popped the hood sure enough had a small block chevy in it automatic four speed automatic rad looked good you know everything looked really good on this truck the one problem that it had was it had a big picker boom up on the top of it that was bent at probably a 20 25 degree angle and it caved in the roof of the truck so as i'm standing there looking at this looking up at this picker I, 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 the guy goes, what do you think? And I looked over him and I said, yeah, I like this. And I'm standing there looking at the boom and he goes, oh yeah, not, that, that's not good for nothing. I said, no, I said, I like the looks of this because this truck was on the road and working when it rolled over on the roof and the boom caved in the cab of the truck. So, I mean, we're talking about a $20,000, $30,000 picker unit cabs trashed pickers trashed and, and here's this truck with every single part i need on it so we talk a little bit more go look at all the other trucks couldn't find anything that was going to work so we uh, we're, we're talking a bit more about this and it sounds like a really good prospect we go back to the office and he talks to his boss about a price and you know the price that he gave me on the original transmission the price they worked out for every single piece that I need was only $500 more. So as I listed before, we're talking everything starting at the flex plate, the torque converter, the starter, transmission cooling lines, the radiator, the shifter, the big parking brake drum, drive shaft. I mean, the works. Really good deal, I thought. So I, I talked to the guy, I said, well, Kate, you know, I, I, I don't need anything right now. You know, I'll, I'll be back in two weeks coming this way. I said, what I'll do is I'll bring my trailer this time because I've got a whole bunch of parts here. I'm not just squeezing all this stuff into the back of my little Ford Edge. That's not cool. She goes, yeah, yeah, we'll get the boys on in a couple days and we'll start pulling all this stuff out and get it together for you. So, good enough. A couple weeks later, I, I give him a call. I said, yeah, I'll be, I'll be coming by. I got my trailer. I'd like to come pick up the stuff here. And he goes, oh, we started pulling the truck apart and we ran into a little bit of a problem. He said, the bell housing's cracked in it. Well, that's not a good thing because the bell housing can't just be changed on automatic transmission. If it's a standard, sure, that's a different story. Unbolt a bolt a new one on. 
but this is a, a big one piece unit so that's trash but they pulled off all the other parts off this truck every single thing that he thinks I need unscrewed nothing cut all the bolts everything so he had a couple more of these AT 545s sitting out in their general stock area with a bunch of transmissions that they sell and he had one on a pallet this is the very first one him and I looked at because he was just trying to show me exactly what they looked like I, I'd never seen one of these transmissions sitting out and we wanted to make sure it was gonna fit in the car okay and, and all this but the guy says to me he goes yeah we got all the parts off that truck that you need and he goes what I'm gonna do is I am gonna take this 545 that you and I first looked at I checked the model numbers everything matches it's uh, four-speed automatic you know I'm gonna give you that one and that sounded like a really good deal because all these transmissions that they had out in this little general area are all the stuff that they pull out of vehicles that they know are really good you know they will be able to give it to a person offer the 90-day warranty know the person's not going to come back I mean it's just it's all around really good the transmission coming out of this truck could have been a questionable piece of equipment I mean none of us know the exact history except that they bought it from an insurance company because it was a rollover and it was a parts truck so yeah this uh, this sounds like it's all gonna work out really good so I'm on my way down there right now I got about another hour to go before I get there uh, he says everything's on a pallet I'm gonna pull off uh, a couple shots when we're loading the pallet into the back of the trailer here and we'll get a look at it unless it's all wrapped up in plastic bags I mean I've, I've seen this already I know what it looks like I got a, a tarp in the back of the trailer that I'm gonna lay down we'll set the pallet on top of the tarp and I can roll up the sides just in case anything leaks out shouldn't be an issue the torque converter should be strapped on so that uh, all the fluid should stay inside everywhere but just to be sure you know could be antifreeze or oil that leaks out of the radiator I'm not sure how they got the stuff bundled up but we'll find out so yeah I'm, uh, I'm a little excited about this I mean I'm, I'm not gonna pull the old engine and transmission out of the truck right away this is gonna be a project that's gonna happen a little bit over this summer I want to get it in so I, I might not even have it in in time to, to use the 90-day warranty I'm not really worried about that though uh, I'm, I'm gonna take this guy's word that the transmission is decent because he's been really good to me the way we've talked and uh, you know what I, I was looking at possibly buying a personal one off somebody anyways who I may have trusted less and I was going to rebuild the transmission before it even went in to absolutely know for sure that I had something good so I'm okay with that the only other part of this deal is the guy knows I drive by here every couple weeks so he told me he said you know when you get all your old parts pulled out your old transmission all the stuff that you're not going to use he goes the deal for the price that we worked out is that you bring me back all the parts off your truck that you're not using or the parts that I give you that you're not using so drive shaft cross member whatever I need he's load me up with the works I'll sift through everything I'll figure out exactly what I need I'll put the old stuff together on a pallet load it into the little trailer and I'll bring it back to this guy because there's other stuff that I'm going to end up needing. I, I believe there's uh, split rims on this truck that I don't want. I want to get, you know, like Dayton's or uh, solid wheels on it. Don't want to deal with split rims. Uh, maybe some interior panels. Possibly a grill if I decide not to build one. The plan right now is, though, that I'm going to build one probably out of expanded metal that's very plain, take all the badging off the truck and everything. I'd actually like to maybe put a set of dual headlights in it, decent headlights instead of the crappy old 1980 things that are in there could simply change the bulbs out on it but I think I'd like to go to some newer style lights and get some really good light hitting the highway if a person has to drive down the highway in the dark at all so that's uh that's what's going on right now just a little bit of a backstory about the transmission here and uh yeah going to pick it up right away uh, all that noise you hear coming out of the back end of the car that's because the trailer is empty right now I really should have thrown a couple sandbags up in the front of it to give it a little bit of tongue weight or something so it's kind of bouncing around on the hitch a little bit uh, you'll see the trailer after it's a small enclosed trailer that we use for a variety of things 
little bit of noise driving down the highway with it right now, but that's my own fault. Once we get the pallet loaded with the transmission, all the parts will adjust things properly. So I actually got some tongue weight for the long drive. I don't want to drive down the highway with 500 pounds worth of stuff in the back of this and it bouncing against the hitch like that. We want to get proper tongue weight on it. A little bit of weight transferred to the back of the car. Good traction, avoid this noise and rattling that's going on. So that's it. I'm gonna turn this off and continue driving down the highway here. Roads are really really clear right now, so I decided to turn the camera on and actually talk about this a bit because I just got all this stuff reeling through my head right now. And I'm not driving in the snow anymore. This was a good spot just to kind of throw something together. A lot of wasted time driving down the highway here for me. So yeah, that's it.